let's switch it up from energy to waste because I saw we all generated a lot of waste today, right? Um, when it comes to recycling, we all know what goes where if I ask you in isolation. But yet we mess up when we are approaching the bins. Across the US, 70% of the waste generated annually is recyclable. But only 30% of it gets recycled. And I would get frustrated when I would see such stats. So it reminded me uh, that recycling is actually, it's a behavior, much like eating healthily or exercising. We often engage in that less than we should be doing it. Um, it also reminded me of a personal behavior change story. Uh, I was talking to my cousin a few years ago, and I shared, I'm struggling to exercise consistently. I had the motivation, but just couldn't do it. So he, rather than giving me a lecture, he took out a paper, drew a simple graph, and made me understand the logic behind my behavior. And it made sense to me. And I was able to hit the gym three times a week at least. So as I was observing the problem, I thought this is perfect because I see my friends, just like the, the people here. Do you have friends who always struggle when they go to the bins? Raise your hands. Great. So uh, I hope I can help. <laughs> um, they are smart, educated. But when they go to the bins, they suffer from the bin dilemma. They get confused <laughs> as to what goes where and end up tossing things incorrectly. They would do that at my home in all the parties. So I thought there, there needs to be a solution. I reminded myself that there is a model that helped me change my behavior, which is perfectly applicable here. That model was developed by a Stanford behavioral scientist B.J. Fogg. He found that for a behavior to change, three elements must converge at the same moment. Motivation, ability, and a prompt. Even if one of that falls, um, we won't see the behavior changing. For a person to recycle, in our case, the problem that we are trying to solve, they must be sufficiently motivated high enough should have an ability to do it, we have to make it really easy and be sufficiently prompted. Even if one of these elements is missing, I think they'll fall in the sad zone here below the curve. So let's, let's hold on to this model, B map, and understand how we can use these three elements to influence all of our friends. When we think about motivation, I think it's already pretty high. Raise your coffee or water cups. Most of us statistically are going to go to our nearest way station here in the room or outside to dispose it. So we are anyways going to go to the bin. It's just about making people put it in the right things. The way to fuel this existing motivation to dispose, to dispose it correctly in the right bin, is to use social tactics. As humans, we all want to fit in. Nobody likes rejection. We want to be socially accepted. So subtle public shaming from friends and family. <laughs> I judge my friends a lot of times. Uh, and then making them understand the logic behind it. Also thinking most of the people are loss aversive. We, we figure out that there are things that we care about and we um, fear losing them. So if we understand that, we can leverage those tactics. I was talking to my friend, and she's really um, into oceans, and she was talking about the bay. So I shared a story on how a sea turtle trapped in plastic died, and I got her attention. So think about those tactics. When it comes to our second element, ability, it's really about making it easy, convenient, and accessible. So, I thought about it when we approach the bins. Um, imagine your coffee and paper cups here. And you go there, and you don't see a recycle or a compost bin where the cups would rightfully belong to. There is a high chance most of us will toss it in the first bin that we see. And there is a reason. As humans, we are wired to conserve our energy. Because we spend the time, made that effort, go to the first bin, we are not going to go any further. 
and we see that a lot around us if we start noticing it. In waste industry, they, they solve for this problem by marrying the bins. And that's what you are seeing here in, in Google. If all the three bins that are together, it really makes it easy for people to do the right thing. Another strong psychological nudge is sizing. Here, three bins are the same size. But imagine if a blue bin or a green bin is five times bigger than a landfill bin. It will send a signal to our brains that most of the thing might belong here. So we can leverage this strategy depending on the location. Assume that we have sufficiently motivated our friends. We have made it easy for them to do it. Then the last piece is having an effective prompt. It sends a signal to our brain that we need to do it. Signages are a big one. A lot of times I see bins at the BART station, in restaurants, just floating here and there with no signages, no proper naming. So I think that's a very key effective prompt. Like here in the photo, instead of having a lot of text on what goes where, if we have real pictures or even more creative, have a real uh, juice can there, that helps people to better associate that with recycling. It, it reinforces the idea. Also thinking about color. Most of us here would associate blue with recycle and green with compost. If these colors are kept consistent all across different campuses or in restaurants here, then it would again reinforce the idea when we see those colors. So hoping that you became by now kind of experts in using BMAP, let's uh, assess the effectiveness of this setup. This is a photo I took in a mall in San Francisco. It's a food court. I think at least they've done a good job by having three bins together. So they have married the bins. They have kept the colors consistent, blue for recycle, green for compost. But an effective prompt is missing. Any guesses? Signages. Just by adding signages, research shows that recycling outcomes can be increased by up to 35%. Imagine the cumulative effects of our little tweaks if we start understanding the issues. As we start using BMAP, there is an important caveat. When we recycle, we feel great. We feel like we did our part to save the environment. But that biases us into becoming wishful or aspirational recyclers. We end up tossing things in the recycle bin, thinking or hoping they could be recycled. And that causes a problem, that is contamination. Many of you might know right now, US is in a recycling crisis. Most of the valuable recyclers are being uh, sent to the landfill because China isn't accepting our recyclables uh, for reason being contamination. And it, it's also important to understand many of us live and work in different cities. A coffee cup in San Francisco can be recycled. But actually, in Sunnyvale, and it's on their website, I verified it cannot be. It goes in the garbage bin. So it's about having effective prompts, so we try to avoid these contamination issues. Last but not the least, I think the best we all can do to help is to just reduce the amount of waste we generate. I think we have the power to make better choices and better commitments. I stop using plastic water bottles. And I think this is the easy one, right? We can carry reusable bottles. I stop using Ziploc bags. I carry my lunch every day in, in containers. So figure out what works for you and how you can do your part. Last but not the least, here is a challenge. Use the BMAP model to assess trash setups around you, maybe at your home or in your community and identify those missing elements. I think together we can be better influencers. Thank you.